Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Flower Power Live. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about something that's just not even really a plant. It's kind of a weird thing, but I think you'll enjoy it. So stick around for that. My name's Allison, and welcome to Flower Power, where I share all kinds of plant wisdom about how you can use that in your life and create better allies with plants in your world. So this week, March, first week of March, there was a huge storm that happened around my house and lots of things got blown down, including the bazillion extra pine cones from 2020. I don't know where you live. Did you get like 10 times as many pine cones as usual? We got that around here. But anyway, the uh, when wind comes through, I was thinking, oh, it kind of acts like nature's pruning shears and it trims up a lot of the dead and branches or things that are dying that need to be kind of cleaned off of the trees in particular. And so while I don't really like these kinds of really intense storms, I do love to go out after a storm and see what kind of treasures I can find. And one of the things that I always look for is Usnia. Now, so what is Usnia anyway? Um, well, I wrote you a little poem to, uh, to teach you about, or to introduce you, I should say, to Usnia. Are you ready? It's not an herb, a bush or tree, true leaf or root you will not see. It lives aloft among the pines, two strange organisms entwined. Have you guessed it yet? It's not something you would plant in your yard. It's something you would find um, on a walk out in the woods. It is a type of lichen. And lichens are very weird organisms. They are actually a symbiotic combination of a fungi and an algae. So they work together because fungi, mushrooms, they don't have the ability to create their own food, right? They do not have any photo, uh, ability to photosynthesize. They don't have any kind of chlorophyll. So they rely either on being um, rotting, taking food out of other uh, plants that are dying, or in this case, they've created a relationship with algae. Now, when you think of algae, you think, well, doesn't that like live on the top of a pond, right? But algae is capable of photosynthesizing. It has chloroplasts in it. And so what's happened is over millennia, the fungi has become the house and the algae has been kind of like the the powerhouse for the house, um, and they live together where the algae photosynthesizes and the uh, fungi benefits from that. And it's allowed algae to live in places where it wouldn't normally live outside of these wet environments. So Usnia, there's a bunch of different types of it, and um, it is this kind of light, lacy green. I actually have some. I didn't find any the other day after the storm, but I did have a few of them that I've collected, and I decided the best way to show you this is to put it up against my black shirt right here. I don't know if you can see the details on that. If I get too close, it just gets washed out. But it's kind of this lacy light green, um, frilly, and it can grow really, really long. It doesn't grow like that around here, um, but in other parts of the Northern Hemisphere, in the wetter areas, like in the Pacific Northwest, you might see something like this. And its nickname, as you might guess, is Old Man's Beard. So it'll grow hanging off all these branches on different kinds of conifers. So pines or spruce and um, any other types of cedars maybe. But where I live, it looks a lot more like this, a little bit smaller, as you can see here. And again, this is, it's a bit of a um, saprophyte, which means it lives off of dying things. And so it tends to latch onto these older branches that are a little bit weaker so that it can kind of take advantage of them. And that's why you see it falling down after windstorms so often. Now, one of the cool things I found out about, um, well, lichens in general, but also usnia is that it is a bioindicator for air quality. And what this means is that they can, scientists or whoever can tell um, that in certain areas, they have an expectation for how healthy the lichens might be. 
And if they're not growing up to that uh, robustness, then that means that there is probably some type of air pollution in the area. So it's kind of a way when they first go into an area, they can get a kind of assess, you know, what's the quality like around here. So if you saw my show on uh, Golden Seal, you might remember that there is a certain code of ethics for wild harvesting any type of plant. And that applies here to Usnia because you're not gonna grow this in your yard. It's either gonna show up on trees around you or you're gonna go get it in the woods. So what you want to make sure and do, like I said before, is you wanna take it off of these fallen branches. You're not gonna go up in a tree and start ripping it off. It grows only about two millimeters per year, two millimeters. So this is a very slow growing plant and it's, ecology is such that you really can't go out and disturb it a whole lot. So make sure that if you want to collect some Usnea, you're only taking it off of fallen branches or sometimes we even find the pieces just by themselves on the ground. Now there are over 3000 different species of lichen. So you want to make sure that you're getting the right one as with anything that you are wild harvesting in particular. Um, so one of the tricks to this, and this isn't going to do it with this one because this is been dried for a while, is you, you look for this light green, frilly lacy. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull on one of the strands. And you'll know that it's the right usnea if it stretches, if it has an elasticity to it. This is one of the indicators that that is the correct usnea that you want to collect. Now, if it's not the right one, you can always collect it anyway because it is a lovely color. It might make a nice corsage, don't you think? And um, you can bring it inside. You can put it on a nature table, uh, put it like inside your potted plants or something like that. And there's a woman um, that I follow on Instagram. She uses lichens a lot for making different types of natural plant dyes and paints and stuff. And she comes up with some of the coolest colors. So it does have a lot of versatile uses. However, medicinally, its main use is for its antimicrobial properties, and it's used for different kinds of infections. It's specifically indicated for a particular type of bacteria called gram-positive bacteria. So these um, are, uh, have you ever heard of staph infections or perhaps strep throat? Uh, these are the type of bacteria that cause those sorts of infections. So Usnea is your go-to addition to any kind of formula that you might be using. And the, of course, this week, when I started thinking about Usnea, I got a sore throat. So I decided to make my favorite go-to tea for sore throat. Actually, I'm gonna have some right now. Which is sage, just like your regular culinary herb. And I you boil the water, pour it over the sage, and then you put in like a dropper full or two of a Usnea tincture. Now the tincture is the best way to use this medicinally for an infection. Another way that I haven't used it before, but I might try this year if I find some Usnea, is to make it into an infused oil. We talked about salves and oils earlier in other uh, episodes. And it is used because of these antimicrobial properties. You can use it directly for wound healing. So that's another great use for it. And it can just be, like I said, you could make an Usnea tea, but um, like it's not always uh, available. And so that's why I usually just make a tincture out of it. Again, a tincture is just, you put the stuff in, you pour some alcohol over it, you let it sit for six weeks, you shake it around a bit during that time, filter it out, boom, you got a tincture. It's really much easier than you might think. And it doesn't cost $12 for a little teeny dropper bottle. So if you're interested in really getting into medicine making, you wanna investigate making your own tinctures. You can just save an awful lot of money. But that is not the point of today. Today, then I want to talk a little more about Usnea and I decided to do Usnea and then I went to see, oh, is there a card in the Herb Crafters Tarot? And sure enough, there was. And it's this beautiful card with a um, wreath. And it's a wreath of Usnea. And 
it's lying on the snow and it has all these kind of treasures tucked into it, including rose hips and twigs and feathers and pine cones and dandelions. And these, it has some crystals. They're pointing north because I don't know if you ever heard about, I don't know if it's an old wives tale. I think it's pretty true that lichens tend to grow on the north side of a tree. So if you are lost in the woods and you see some lichens, it's most likely that that's the north side of the tree. It also has some crystals and there's a candle lit in the center. The message or the little saying from the book is this, withdraw into sacred solitude, gather treasures from the darkness, emerge with the light. And this card is the hermit. It's the number nine. It's in one of those major arcana cards. And so what it's really telling us is that, you know, your clarity is found in places where there isn't a whole lot of other people's noise, other people's thoughts and ideas. And, you know, if you look at how this grows, two millimeters per year, it only grows long and healthy in a place that's free, uh, where the air is clean, where you can find uh, solitude from pollution. So go out into the forest and gather your treasures and get those things that you need to support your life. So Uznia, if we let's so let's think about it. It only thrives in a pristine environment, and it's also satisfied to only grow two millimeters per year. So what if your growth, your two millimeters of growth, depended on keeping yourself in an environment free of pollutants? Are you paying attention to the quality of your environment? And when I say pollutants, I mean, you know, of course, air pollution and maybe junk food that you eat or dirty water and things like that. But there's also a lot of other things that we consume that are pollutants, that are toxic, toxic people, news, and unfortunately for most of us, our own negative thoughts. So this past weekend, I, I talk about this a lot because it's something that I really tried to work a lot on for myself. Um, this past weekend, I did four days immersed. It was virtual, but it was a um, Tony Robbins event called Unleash the Power Within. And it was just a huge personal growth with all these speakers and things like that. And it was really amazing. One of the days you do all this personal growth. And then on the last day, they say, okay, well, if you really want to be able to do these things, you need to have your physical energy and be in good physical condition to be able to pursue your dreams and things like that. So they were talking about how our health and energy for our whole body depends on the health of our cells and how we need to make sure that we're giving our cells the conditions that they need to function at their highest. And that includes plenty of oxygen, which is really why we want to move and exercise plenty of water, keep hydrated. And also the third one was the ability to eliminate our waste. So if we are overloaded with waste products or we can't eliminate them for some reason, we are not gonna feel good and we're not going to be healthy. So you need to stay aware of what is in your environment. What is your two millimeters of growth that you're trying to make right now that is not thriving? What part of you is not thriving because there's something toxic, some sort of pollution in there. So Uzni is asking you to disinfect yourself a little bit here. Make sure you're setting yourself up for the best possible environment for your own growth. And that is our message tonight from Uznia. But before I go, I just wanted to recognize uh, a dear friend of mine who passed away a couple of weeks ago. And she was one of those people that watched every single one of my shows. Peg, I love you and I will miss you. And I hope you are doing well wherever you are now. So thanks to all of you who are watching all my shows, who are supporting me. And I really, really appreciate it. I really uh, love you all. So thank you for joining me here tonight. And if you're interested in getting more involved with the community of people that are sharing ideas about our plant journeys, then feel free to join my Facebook group. I will put the link down below. 
Until then, have a wonderful week and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.